Good morning. Okay. Good morning, Your Holiness. Thank you. Hello, Your Holiness. I really feel very happy to okay. say once more, although physical distance, but mentally we always together. You dedicated well-being of other. I also say dedicated well-being of other. So in that level, we are same. So that sort of spirit always with, with us. So we always together. Thank you. Your Holiness, it's so great to see you again. Are, are you well? How is your health? You have to judge my face. <laughs> 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 how are you, Your Holiness? Well, how, how, how is your health? Uh, quite, Can you hear? So, qu quite often, you see, you see, people, when I met, you see, occasionally I ask, uh, what do you think, my age? In many cases, they say about... Uh, 60, 70. So now, oh, because uh, it's nearly 86. 85. 86. Uh, and physical, <laughs> you see, uh, very healthy. I think this, I uh, feel because of my mind peaceful. And then the, uh, I think all of you know, buddhichitta, altruism. It's the main sort of my prayer. So long space remain, I will remain. So long sentient beings remain, I will remain in order to serve. So then at least, you see, uh, this life at least it's some uh, benefit to many people. So, uh, I feel, you see, the purpose of life and some way, I see the feeling, feeling, feeling. Oh, uh, I see the materialize. So, I determined at least uh, the first pension lama, he lived 108 years. So some of my friend he said, asked me, you should live uh, like uh, first pension lama, pension of some That I felt, oh, that guy, I feel realistic. So I may live another uh, to two, two decades, to three decades. Okay. <laughs> we would like that very much. Thank you. Well, you, so, you look so, so, very healthy. Oh, yeah. so, so I want to ask you, since our last meeting, how much changed my face? You look exactly very the little. same. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You look, you look great. You, and we're so happy that you're healthy and that you're able to join Mind and Life again. Um, since we were together in November, really not that long ago, the world yes. has changed quite a lot. Right, right, right. Oh. And while we can't be together in person, we want to be safe. We want to be healthy, mm. and we are grateful for technology that we can meet this way. Mm. Yes, the casa, the the casa, live, live cast, live webcast. Mind and life. Mind and life. Mind and life. Oh, you see this uh, organization uh, since now uh, many years we have this meeting and a very good opportunity to exchange 
our experiences. And the main aim is uh, to also the, how much we can contribute for human beings' uh, knowledge. And with that, the human mind becoming more calm. So now today, uh, physically, now a distance. But anyway, you see, this can cover uh, many people on, on this planet. So mm -hmm. this is modern technology, very, very useful, very helpful. Uh, so now I'm looking forward to have this uh, discussion with our members. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, we are lucky that there are probably one, hundreds of thousands of people that are with us from all over the world right now. Mm. In this moment, we're all together. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. And so, yes, Your Holiness, the mind and, mind and Life, the first dialogue was 33 years ago. And you have inspired us to be curious and to ask big questions. And we're still doing that. And mm -hmm. we're bridging science. We're bridging wisdom with the ultimate aim to bring positive good into the world. So tonight, we're going to be together for about an hour, and you are joined, or this morning, actually. Your time is morning. It's very late here in the United yes. States. Oh. Perhaps, yeah. perhaps those people in America, I think, already feel sleep. <laughs> yeah. And then our friends in Europe, it's the middle of the night there. Yeah. I, I always have the nine hour sleep. So this moment, oh, very fresh. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's continue. So yes. um, I, you, we are joined uh, for this conversation with some old friends who you know very well, and right. so I'm going to introduce them. So uh, first, I'll introduce Professor Richie Davidson, who you know very well. And Richie is the founder and director of the Center for Healthy Minds, professor of psychology at the University of Wisconsin at Madison. He's a former board member of Mind and Life, and he's currently a founding steward and our chief scientific advisor. So we're so happy that Richie can be with us today. Wonderful to be here, Your Holiness. Great to see you again. And Thank next, you. I'd like to introduce Tupton Jimpa Longri, who you know very well, who is your longtime English translator. And mm -hmm. Jimpala is also chair of the board of directors of, of Mind and Life. He's also founder of the Compassion Institute. And this evening, or this morning, he is joining us as your translator. And I understand that this is the first time that you and Jimbala have worked together through a computer. So we will see how this goes. <laughs> and finally, I'm um, pleased to introduce Dr. Carolyn Jacobs. And you've known Carolyn for a nice. number of years. And Carolyn is a longtime Mind and Life board member she served as interim president of Mind and Life. She's Dean Emeritus of the Smith College School for Social Work. And Carolyn um, today is serving as the moderator of the conversation. And we're so happy that she can do that and is doing that. And I will pass it over to you, Carolyn, to start the conversation. Thank you, Susan. And Your Holiness, it is such an honor and joy to be in your presence again. And I'm looking forward to this time together and to your wisdom and your sense of humor and all that we can share in this hour. We're coming together to discuss current issues and how 
we can bring humanity along together. During this time, we face challenges that are very important that we have your insights about resilience and compassion. I will be asking five questions mm -hmm. and Richie Davidson will be able to respond about the science that's related and informs some of those questions after you have spoken. And so I would just begin considering the high anxiety at this moment with the global pandemic being so prevalent and quite debilitating. The first question is, what skills can we practice to cope with this anxiety and uncertainty? <clears throat> well, this, uh, what to say, illness, uh, uh, worldwide, rather serious. Uh, so, uh, many sort of scientists, many experts who are concerned about human health, they say they really pay much attention. So, I have nothing to add except you see, I very much deeply appreciate you see, these peoples. In some cases, I think uh, risk or danger of their own life, you see, uh, don't care. Helping other people, serving other people. A number of uh, nurses uh, is also, you see, suffer. So I very, very much appreciate. And then, uh, mentally, I think, too much fear, anxiety, that also uh, may be causing uh, uh, this illness. So mentally, you see, stable. And here, the one uh, uh, Nalendra master, you see, his sort of expression. Uh, when we face problem, uh, we analyze the problem. If that problem can solve, uh, then no need, fear, make effort. If the problem we cannot solve beyond our effort, uh, our sort of effort, then no use, too much worry. That, you see, quite practical. I think uh, mental level you see, less fear, anxiety, maybe some help. So then after all, uh, you see, uh, firstly, I think global warming. Hmm? So some experts say within next few decades, uh, then world uh, may become too hot. So whole world may become desert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is very serious. So think that way. So after, after all, whole world, whole galaxies, you see, change. So one individual life is just a tiny part of that. So you see, uh, now here, the uh, Indian thought, Indian tradition, rebirth, uh, life after life. Uh, that 
philosophy, that thinking, very helpful. You see, uh, the this, this life, when sort of end, this is not permanent end. Mm. A life, life after life will go. Uh, and then, uh, according to theistic religion, you see, we all created by God. So end of our life, uh, you see, means, you see, uh, according to God's sort of plan, uh, certain sort of, what's the day, uh, accord, I mean, according to God's plan, uh, it happened. So, we, uh, next sometime, relax, then uh, Jesus Christ come. <laughs> that also is good, you see, to keep uh, hope and peace, isn't it? So, uh, so now today, um, another sort of serious problem, uh, our own created problem. Uh, now, for example, uh, uh, in America, nowadays, you see, uh, some racial problem. Yes. And, and the, 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 what you call black people. So, yes. you see, this, uh, I think, uh, much is it depend on our mental attitude. We must promote uh, oneness, concept of oneness of humanity. That's my number one commitment. Uh, seven billion human beings, the way born, same. The way dying, same. While we are alive, the Besides, you see, physical differences, emotion level, mental level, same. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then the reality. You see, we too much sort of emphasis, we, our community, uh, and their community. That's the source of problem. And that thinking is outdated. In ancient time, one sort of king or queen, or some cases religious leader, then they use the emphasis, my people, or like that. So that's that thinking now gone. Now we have to think entire human being. Firstly, entire sentient being. At a practical level, entire human being on this planet, seven billion human beings. Our future depends on uh, seven billion human beings. Uh, mm -hmm. Each individual human being's future depends on the humanity. Uh, so now, the thinking my group, their group, on the basis of religion, basis of color, uh, basis of social sort of uh, status, all these are uh, old thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, now today, for example, the global economy, no national, no national boundary. Uh, yes. And modern technology on this, you see, belongs to humanity, not my nation, their nation, no. So too much emphasis, small, small, because of due to some differences and Emphasis, we, 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 we. That's the source of problem. Now we have to think one human humanity, seven billion human being. Uh, that's my number one commitment. Try to promote sense of oneness of seven billion human being. Uh, then these differences are uh, minor, minor. And even if the same person at young age, different thinking, uh, old age, 
uh, something different. But this is still same being. So similarly, mm -hmm. the Easterner, Westerner, Northerner, uh, Southerner, and America itself, you see, they, uh, I think, uh, different part of America, this is where uh, uh, community like black people, majority black people, uh, you see, we can, we can divide, you see. But these are minor. We are mm -hmm. same human being. Oh. The different color and make distinction. Even you see different religion make distinction. Mm -hmm. uh, Hindus, Buddhists, Muslim is uh, uh, the uh, Judaism, so on. You see, these are, you see, the minor. The main thing is we all same human being. So now yes. we really need, you see, to educate and share with other people. We are same human being. We have to live on this planet. Uh, so, uh, And then, is a human being, uh, mentally, emotionally, you see, uh, physically, basically we are the same. Uh, you see, make a distinction on the basis of color. And it's silly, narrow-minded. And similarly, distinction based on religious faith. Also, it's silly. Mm -hmm. We are all the same, same human being. Uh, so now, uh, present is some problem in, in America. And then you should look, India. Mm -hmm. India, uh, over a billion population. Uh, it's an all world, different religious tradition uh, live together here. Millions of Muslims, uh, uh, then Jew, Jew, I think less number. Uh, then Zorazudin, uh, less number. So, you see, India, I think all major world tradition live together. Then South India, West India, North India, East India, Central India, different people, different language, different script, but all live together mm -hmm. oh, in the concept of union of India. Uh, you all usually live together, small, small differences. Each uh, community has the right to preserve their own identity, including religion, including language, Okay, but you see, not create division. Mm -hmm. So India, I think, now I, I live this country, uh, the, major, the major portion of my life now spent here. So I really admire India. So the rest of the world, I think, uh, should look like India. It's a different color different religion, it's a different tradition. All this belongs to uh, humanity. Uh, so that is now, uh, I think, especially in America, I think if you too much sort of uh, stress, uh, different color, I think it becomes something important. Uh, then, uh, the other hand, you should emphasize uh, entire seven billion human beings. We are the same. And, and, mm -hmm. and the uh, America, uh, I think you, you should look European Union. Different language, although different sort of, I mean, all those are the same sort of, what's the, uh, biologically, I think, same. But you see, 
different nation, different nation mm -hmm. so different language, different culture, and previous time, you see, killing each other, like Fran French and Germany. Mm -hmm. Here, you see, I want to tell, hmm, uh, Karsa, German and Sunni Buti. I didn't want to ask one Vesika, once she told me, when he was young, and every German eye, French is their enemy. Similarly, French eye, Germany is their enemy. Now that kind of sort of t feeling completely changed once he told me. Hmm? And then you can see uh, uh, General de Gaulle and Adana. Yes. Hmm? During wartime, they are arch enemy. But after Second World War, they use human intelligence properly. Now, uh, time come, we should uh, create uh, one, one European Union. I think that is really wise. Since the European Union developed, then at least last few decades, no killing among the member states. If yes. European Union not yet developed, then I think last few decades, I think some killing uh, might happen. So therefore, uh, we can learn the spirit of European Union. You see, yeah. that, that come, you see, tremendous difficulties or killing, suffering. Then they become more mature and then thinking wider way, and then the European Union start. Like America, very name, United States. So, you see, they uh, different color, different religion, different races. You see, these are uh, the very basis of united. Mm -hmm. If just one, then no meaning yeah. of United States. Because there are, you see, different people, different culture, or different race, or different color, then uh, create uh, the very name United States. So therefore, I think today, uh, quite unfortunate sort of thing in America, the color, on the basis of color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Now this, of course, mm, I feel, uh, when I heard you see, these things, I feel very, very sad. Uh, and many friends in America, my friend in America. Uh, so uh, that big nation and America is leading nation of free world. So very important. America now should, uh, should be the example of rest of the world where uh, Africa and Latin America and the Middle East, some problem. Oh, then you should tell, oh, different color, different religion, but we can live together. Mm -hmm. Like, so th that's the very basis of United States. So, uh, so uh, this, Thank you. now here I think due to uh, certain sort of uh, factor, certain event, you see the, uh, the crisis, uh, the difficulties, uh, color. Now these are, I think, our own, I think, creation uh, yes. uh, due to narrow-minded and too much emotion. Yes. So now here, we human being, every human being, emotion is part of our life. Mm -hmm. But most of the inno emotion, uh, which no, ba no proper basis, just emotion, 
This usually is create more problem. Then the emotion such as compassion, uh, these things, you see, based on reason. So now, uh, I have some sort of uh, contract among the scientists, uh, quantum physics. Now quantum physics, uh, uh, some experts, they say, uh, things uh, appears, material thing, appears uh, existing, ex ex existence of objectively. Uh, but if you go deeper level, then nothing exists as appears. Uh, in go deeper way, uh, then you see uh, nothing, what's the uh, identity? Appears uh, something independent. Go deeper, everything particle. Then also you see, um, there are some scientists say, they finally, the mental conception, mental projection, you mentally, you uh, identify something. Otherwise, the objectively, nothing uh, exists that way. So, as one Indian uh, great was a scholar, Kasa, Raja Ramana. Raja Ramana once told me, quantum physics in the West, uh, something new. In this country, in India, over uh, 2,000 years, already mm -hmm. developed. And then he, uh, uh, he recites some uh, verses of Nagarjuna. Everything interdependent. There is nothing uh, objectively exist. So, the, so uh, I feel the quantum physics, quantum physics, you see, if we use thinking that way according to quantum physics, then all the negative emotion, such as anger, fear, mm -hmm. On the basis of appearances, go deeper the, ob the people or object which you feel fear. Go deeper, not as appears something solid, something independent, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all these negative emotion, which based on appearances, you see, no foundation. Other hand, karuna, uh, compassion, you see, you see, a kind of emotion, but based, very, very much based on reality. So those positive emotion, we can, how uh, say they, uh, increase through reasoning, through meditation. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, those harmful uh, emotion, no proper basis, just on the appearances like that. So that's quite as encouraging or hopeful. All the negative emotion, not proper basis. Yes. Uh, positive emotion, the proper basis. So we can develop through training, through reasoning, uh, positive emotion. The negative emotion, thinking more deeper way, no basis. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Richie, there are many parts of this you might want to reflect the science on, and maybe it is also starting with the compassion training research and maybe moving back to some of the okay. work and implicit bias around. Well, uh, Your Holiness, it's wonderful to be with you again. Um, and uh, uh, just a few reflections, uh, actually, to start with the current pandemic. Uh, there was a paper published by Chinese scientists just a few weeks ago showing that 54% of the Chinese population has reported either moderate or very severe symptoms of distress from the coronavirus pandemic more than half the population. 
So what many scientists are now describing is a pandemic of a mental health crisis that is associated with this terrible virus that we have today. And one of the uh, uh, problems that people face is uncertainty, uncertainty about when this will end, uncertainty about how they may actually be infected, uh, if they might be infected. And one of the uh, comments that you made, Your Holiness, um, uh, uh, and uh, you were, uh, I, I, I'm not sure who it was that you're quoting, uh, but there are certain things that we can control and other things that we can't control. And if we can't control them, mm -hmm. uh, we should not worry about them. But what we can control is our own mind. And what we see is that the messages of uncertainty and the messages of fear are having a very destructive effect on people. And it actually has a biological effect too. And we'll talk a little bit more about this, but you brought up the racial tensions in the United States. It turns out that in the group of people between 35 and 45 years of age, black people in America are 10 times more likely to die from coronavirus than white people, 10 times. And this is data from, that was collected from the beginning of February to June 20th and just reported by the Center for Disease Control. So this is a serious issue that is not just psychological, but it, it gets, as we say, under the skin into our biology. Uh, and so I wonder, part of it is, I think, people's attention being grabbed or hijacked, we would say, by messages of fear. And I wonder if you can give us, Your Holiness, some wisdom. How can we control our mind to not be so influenced by these messages of fear uh, and uh, actually uh, calm our mind in a way that would produce more equanimity and uh, uh, actually affect our biology? Now this illness has a what? Has another thing. Coronavirus. Oh, oh that. Oh. As I already mentioned, the, those uh, scientists, and particularly the medical scientists, you see, they still carry some research work. Oh. So uh, that should continue. Uh, and this illness also due to uh, certain virus. 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 Oh. So similarly, this body also has the potential of the antidote. So I think the doctor scientist still uh, continuously research work. Uh, and then individual, I feel uh, it's a mental state. Also, I think some connection. The mental state, calm, and a self sort of confidence, maybe some effect, and too much fear. Uh, then this is a virus. Also, you see, in a way, uh, find the uh, opportunity to create, multiply. Uh, mental level, self-confidence, not much fear. Uh, and then I think the positive uh, particle of 
this body more stronger. That I feel. And including some meditation. Usually, you see, we uh, only you see, talk the materialistic sort of culture or materialistic life. We only do the talking about uh, five senses or organs. Uh -huh. the, I think uh, uh, till because uh, of the late 20th century, Marbe, oh, you see, people not much pay attention about mind. I think those scientists, especially like you, the brain specialist, <laughs> you simply, you see, uh, telling people, brain, 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 brain. <laughs> Not much talk about... We also tell them mind. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think, especially you, the later part of the 20th century, now realize Beside this brain, there is something which can affect our brain, including meditation, some effect, some change of brain. So that we call sixth mind. So meditation uh, is the part of sixth mind. So, uh, and then uh, meditation, uh, including uh, the uh, so control of breathing. I usually, you see, uh, practice that morning. You see, take, and then keep here as much as you can. Then blow. So, uh, such sort of practice gradually, you see, uh, the ability of sixth mind uh, increasing. So, usually we just, the five sense of organs, seeing, hearing, like that. The not so thinking, uh, eye consciousness, ear consciousness, just mind itself. Then on it, meditate. Few seconds, few minutes. As some my friend, even you see, three, four hours. So then it increase the strength of sixth mind, ability of the sixth mind. Then, you see, we call uh, meditation, shamatha, meditation, and uh, analytical. Med the, once you see, you gain some sort of what's the, the forces analyzed, or channelized, right? or analyzed the, 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 the power of sixth mind. Then, med uh, analytical meditation or uh, we call vipassana, marve, or uh, further investigate everything, external things or particles, all, the, all sort of the uh, meditation, uh, you see, uh, the Indian tradition, shamatha, vipassana, very useful. You see, that really uh, increase the power of mind, and also, you see, increase sharpness of mind, like that. So this, I think, according to Indian tradition, um, secular way, not related with religious belief, whether accept religion or not, these are simply academic subject, training our mind, and to utilize the power of mind properly. Sixth mind. So you make, I think, a great contribution regarding the, what's it, the, besides 
brain. There is something which can affect brain. So uh, I really uh, believe, like like you, and now more and more now uh, scientists now paying more attention about our emotion, about our inner world. In the past, just uh, material, external thing. Now begin to research more our inner world. Mm -hmm. Because they, uh, all this uh, anger, fear, uh, all these are part of our uh, sixth mind. So material thing uh, cannot affect uh, on that. So meditation, uh, analyze the mind, and then uh, you can develop conviction, all these negative emotion, uh, no use, so we can reduce. Result, your mind becomes much more peace much more stable. So the other day... Your Holiness... Yes. Yes. No, sorry, please go on. Uh, the other day, about this uh, virus, uh, they uh, mentioned the... Bats. 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 Bats, no. bats, sir. No. Bats, bats, you see, carry, you see, this illness. Uh, of course, you see, some connection, uh, maybe connection, I think all blame on bat. I think wrong. <laughs> 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 the bats, you see, no way to defense themselves. <laughs> we human beings, you see, just a blame. They, they carry this problem, this problem. <laughs> so, so the uh, more research, about mind, about emotion, and then change our emotion through reason, uh, through uh, analytical meditation. Uh, not talking about God, not talking about Buddha, just simply, you say, how to bring a peaceful mind. So instead of Blame uh, uh, bats. Uh, we should we should uh, or say the the kasa. Uh, this is another uh, uh, blame our own negative emotion much better. <laughs> then the question is how to reduce negative emotion. Uh, negative emotion. The way, proper way to reduce negative emotion, not prayer, uh, but analyze the system. Uh, recently, you see some Chinese uh, student who uh, study quantum physics. Now they, they express, you see, as a result of a study of quantum physics, you see, uh, some kind of grasping the uh, external object, something good, something or uh, something bad, you see, very negative. So that is reduced. That is exactly the Buddhist psychology, ancient Indian psychology, also is mentioned that. So, uh, so now you, uh, as my long-time friend, uh, we have this more work to the uh, education field about our emotion and how to uh, reduce negative emotion uh, and how to increase the positive emotion, these things, not touching any religion. 
Yes. Your Holiness, I, I wanted to just mention that when we first began our dialogues with through Mind and Light, uh, the word compassion was not in any textbook of psychology in America, in the West. Uh, if you looked in the index, the word compassion was not there. And it is really through your inspiration that you have uh, catalyzed a whole generation of scientists through Mind and Life that has begun to study how compassion and other forms of meditation actually affect our emotions in this way. And now there is thousands of scientific papers. And literally 20 years ago, there was zero on compassion. Uh, and so uh, I remember the day in Dharamsala when we made a commitment to you that we were going to do everything we could to put compassion on the scientific map. And uh, there's still much to learn, but it is uh, really a testament to the inspiration that you've provided, uh, that there is actually a field now of contemplative science and contemplative neuroscience. And one of the findings that uh, we see that is relevant to an issue that we were talking about earlier is that even relatively short amounts of compassion practice can reduce implicit bias. And implicit bias is prejudice that is uh, subtle. It's, uh, it is non-conscious. It, um, uh, exhibit, it, it's present in our demeanor, in our behavior toward members, for example, of racial outgroups. But we may not actually be aware of it ourselves. And that kind of prejudice or bias can be reduced through these practices. So it is something which uh, has developed and we're really making, I think, very good progress. Uh, but we still, uh, I think, are faced with how we can disseminate this more widely and make these strategies available to everybody. So if you have any advice about uh, how all of us, 7 billion people, can practice, one of the analogies that I sometimes use is that when human beings first evolved on the planet, none of us were brushing our teeth. And today, everyone brushes their teeth, almost every human being on the planet. And it's not part of our genes. It's something we learn. So can we all learn to cultivate compassion? Right. Uh, I always emphasize uh, the existing education, you see, uh, so-called modern education. This is come from West. So no concept, no idea about mind. So now education should include uh, education, beside education of matters, and also, you see, should combine education of mind, education about uh, emotion. So like, you see, hygiene of physical. Uh, similarly, hygiene of emotion. As an academic subject, not a religious uh, subject or next life or heaven, no, simply how to build a society day by day, happier, friendly, peaceful. So hygiene of emotion, you see, should include in our uh, education field. So uh, that's lacking. Uh, the modern education very much oriented about material value. Uh, when we talk about mind, then we felt sometimes we felt that's a religious subject. No, actually not. Uh, so therefore, uh, hygiene of physical, similarly hygiene of emotion, uh, in order to, uh, to explain that, then 
you see different kind of destructive emotion. Uh, here, ancient Indian uh, what is it, a, uh, tradition, a very detailed explanation how much destructive emotion, what kind of emotion, uh, 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 the, uh, I cannot sort of use the English now here, Tibetan, uh, and so, for example, um, so for example, um, so for example, for example, in the, um, for example, in the Indian for example, in the Indian psychology, we see the distinction made between primary awareness itself and the various modalities that are functionally defined. These are referred to as mental factors. For example, one of the texts, Abhidharma, lists 51 such mental factors. Each of them are distinctly defined from the point of view of their functions. So it is quite useful. You see, some ancient Indian text, you see, mentioned these things. And now we should take these uh, academic subject, not religious subject. And of course, not for Buddhist subject, Buddhism. No, nothing. You see, the uh, original source is some Hindu tradition, some Buddhist tradition, some Jain tradition, but that is something different. But we are trying to take this uh, education subject. So I think modern education, uh, education about our inner world, very much lacking. Now that we must sort of uh, start a new text for education from kindergarten level, and then gradually up to university level. You see, uh, we, uh, of we have the subject to study a small particle and then how to grow these big trees like that. So similarly, the mind also, you see, like that, small sort of, uh, sort of, sort of today, uh, one, one small sort of mind, uh, sometimes create uh, much sort of sophisticated mind. That sometimes very harmful, sometimes very uh, helpful. So these uh, is like uh, external thing. Is some we study detail now this more poison, so more dangerous, so we try to avoid. And this something useful, so we particularly, you see, we specialists should pay attention for guru. Similarly, our inner world, our mind, there are a certain sort of emotion useful, and how to, so these positive emotion, we sh worthwhile, we should pay more attention to increase. And then certain emotion, very harmful. So we should reduce that. That not like physical, but its own causes or emotional level. So we should, uh, in our education field, we should include, you see, these, these things. The other day, now my uh, one commitment, it tried to revival of ancient Indian uh, thought, Indian tradition, uh, mainly ahimsa, non-violence. Non-violence very much uh, related with mind, that's karuna. In this country, 2,000 years ago, already developed ahimsa, uh, karuna. So Buddha Dharma itself, part of that. So the in modern Indian, modern in modern Indian education, very much was based on Western materialistic ed education. Now India should combine the ancient Indian knowledge about mind, about emotion, and modern education. India have the ability and opportunity to combine these two things. I often see now telling my Indian Indian friends. So, so the, 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 
the essence is existing education is uh, not adequate uh, to bring a uh, happy person. So now we should, uh, now here, uh, the scientist, I think you have some authority to mention, to raise these questions. If I say, oh, Dalai Lama monk, so naturally, you see this, <laughs> you see this, this view, the scientists say, oh, and then people pay more attention, oh, oh. <laughs> so in reality, well, in, in reality, existing modern education is not because of the adequate you know, for, as I mentioned earlier, you see physical health with that material thing, and then mental health, nothing mentioned. They always, you see, uh, depend on religious faith. Then religion, I respect all religion, uh, but much religion just based on faith. The Buddhist religion, or Hindu Sangha philosophy, or this, and uh, 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 Jain, uh, Indian tradition, you see, uh, quite a lot, because you see, they, in their, in their religion, the practice of shamatha, practice of vipassana there, so some, what's it, the explanation about mind there. But then, uh, I think, uh, maybe uh, I'm Buddhist, so little prejudice, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. But, but look, even Buddhism, the Pali tradition, the, what Buddha says, recorded, and not much analyzed. So Buddha himself, you see, express, oh, my follower should not accept my teaching out of faith, but rather thorough investigation. So none in the tradition. Then, you see, use you see, his advice, and then we extensively use logical approach. Even Buddha's own word come, uh, we just raise question, why? Why Buddha say that? Uh, and if you see Buddha's own word through analyze, through logical approach, if we find a uh, contradiction, then we have right to reject Buddha's own word. So many, that and Pali tradition, not much, and uh, the, the Sanskrit tradition. And actually Nalinda, I think, uh, education sort of center, not just to say uh, monastery. So number of Nalanda master, you see, they, uh, you, I mean, they, uh, they study extensively logic, Parman, uh, like Dignak, Dharmakirti, and then they also see Nagarjuna, uh, Buddha Palita, uh, uh, then, uh, particularly, the Kasachuti, Umajuga, Chandakiti, Ra, Chandakiti. You see, these Nalanda master, you see, when they explain about Buddha Dharma, always use reason. Mm -hmm. So, if uh, through reasoning, Buddha's own word, some contradiction, then they reject. So that is something, uh, uh, something unique, I think good. So we, I think we Tibetan, in the 8th century, although Buddhism introduced Tibet 7th century, then 8th century, Tibetan king, you see, he uh, advised, I mean, he invite the Nalanda master, that's Shanta Rakshita, great logician, great philosopher. So some of his writing, we use textbook. So since he introduced uh, Buddha Dharma according to Nalanda tradition, 
Sanskrit tradition. So we debate over a thousand years. We study rigorously about logic. So now today, uh, uh, among the Buddhist brothers and sisters, I think Tibetan uh, Buddhist who study these things, and then you see they are thinking always logical, logical. Therefore, we develop also the special relation with scientists. The scientist, so science also, you see, uh, investigation, reasoning, reasoning, not belief. So Nalin tradition also is not belief, not faith, investigation, investigating. So now our conference science has a minor science and how we develop. So we, I think at least we made some sort of uh, contribution. And then within Buddhism, uh, see, since uh, many Burmese Buddhists, Thai Buddhists, is quite often used to come to, uh, to see me. So since we become very close friends, so uh, sometimes I teasing them, you only Pali tradition uh, just based on Buddha's word. So you have like no teeth. If something hard come, <laughs> the, we, Nalin tradition, we utilize, so we study logical. So you see, we have our teeth. No matter the hard subject, we, we can do that. <laughs> so therefore, the uh, Shantarakshita, wonderful, wonderful scholar and practitioner. Uh, and his, or is it the, uh, under his guidance, we Tibetan, you see, carry, study, non tradition. Uh, you see, firstly, myself also, you see, uh, six, seven year old, already started memorizing, learned by heart, those root texts. And the yes. uh, and the Kasore, Kalakaje, uh, Mondo Yanki Jans, Shik the Tome Jans. This would be Umunju will just toss up back over you. These are two important texts that uh, children, uh, as young monks, have to uh, memorize, and they're quite tough. So uh, the first one is called the ornament of uh, realization. So the Tibetan word Mundo Gen, mm -hmm. ornament, um, is so some Mundo Dogwe. Mundo Dogwe, yes, let it be. Yes, so So because the, the, the student has been struggling so hard, so started getting lice in the body. So the, the student said, you know, I've been memorizing this ornament text and my body has been ornamented. <laughs> uh -oh. And then the second text is uh, to enter um, or engage, um, entering the middle way. And here too, so the second text is actually a combination of long and short verses. So it's even harder to memorize because it's uneven. So the student was saying that, and it, the term has, the, the title of the text is Umala Jukpa, which is uh, entering the middle way. And the Tibetan term Jukpa, enter, has a double meaning. So it says that, uh, you know, entering this text, uh, memorizing this text, instead of entering the monastery, it looks like I may have to exit. <laughs> So, 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 uh, so, so might... your whole, your holiness, I want to bring us to a important question. You have given us such beautiful teachings in this time. What would you say to our leaders in nations around the country, around the world? What would you say to our young people who are protesting, 
and de de desiring change and who are struggling against systems that they see as oppressive around the world. Yes, world always changing, moving. Uh, now with education, including knowledge about science, you see, uh, I think uh, today's, I did, uh, today's world, I think 100 years ago, much change. Uh, in 20th century, become century of violence. Now, 21st century, I think many people, this is really now serious thinking, that whenever we find difficulties, you see, previously, uh, then we just touch the gun. Now, in 21st century, when we find some disagreement, we think dialogue, dialogue. So I usually, you see, describing now this century should be century of dialogue. Whenever we find some disagreement, some differences. So uh, after all, the, the previous time, previous centuries, many people kill through warfare, but nobody win or uh, eliminate all uh, so-called their enemy. First World War, Second World War, still, you see, the different people uh, who have sort of also actually created some problem, which still remain. So therefore, mm -hmm. now, the uh, uh, only thing is dialogue. So now here, my main sort of uh, uh, desire, or uh, my, my aim is eventually through education and try to promote the spirit of dialogue and on the basis of oneness of seven billion human beings, mm -hmm. we have to live side by side. There's no use war, no use weapon. So this world now should be demilitarized world. Now all these weapons, now, you see, waste of money, mm -hmm. like a nuclear weapon. We spend a lot of money, but nobody dare to use. Useless now. So weapon, you see, no use. Uh, so we should uh, develop demilitarized world. Then any problem through dialogue. And for that, we need self-confidence, believe truth, honest, a wider perspective. Not, not just thinking, my nation, my nation, but entire world, humanity. I think through education, uh, we, can, we can change. Thinking, my nation, my nation, my nation. Uh, you see, that's too narrow-minded. And these are the basis of conflict, warfare. Our thinking, oneness of seven billion human beings. We are the same. We have to live side by side. Now the, some scientists say we are social animal. Any social animal, you see, individual's life depends on the rest of the community. So basically we have the more or say the compassionate mind, because we are a social animal. Uh, each individual's future depends on the community. So now to the world, uh, future of happy world, you see, depends on the entire humanity. So now the education is the key factor. And then meantime, uh, you see, try to demilitarize the world. Then, uh, although I don't know how long they do to global warming, now things become quite serious. <laughs> uh -huh. So yes. that also, you see, 
Uh, it is quite silly, the world itself. Now, you see how long remain, uh, big question. Then, within now, a uh, few decades and killing. Silly, senseless. So I think um, two old person, uh, both, you see, very old and ready to die, then quarrel, then everybody see uh, no sense, isn't it? Uh, two old person, you see, mm -hmm. they now near uh, die, uh, but in uh, the meantime, you see, quarrel each other. So something like that, whole world now begin to ending. So now, uh, let us be happy, peace, compassionate society. <laughs> yes. So but those there's this the joy, the joy of having the logical analysis and thinking to bring to the table of dialogue and engagement with others that you respect as human beings. Right. Right. Thank you. So, my friend, uh, we all have the same sort of uh, responsibility, you see, to educate uh, human brothers, sisters, you see, thinking, uh, pay more attention about our inner value. That is the ultimate source of individual happiness, uh, the ultimate source of uh, happiness of community, then finally happiness of entire seven billion human beings. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Making money, making weapon, uh, just you see, making more money, no guarantee to bring inner peace. Okay. Right. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Now, next. Ah, uh, Carolyn, are you, going, are you going to say anything else? I am going to say thank you. Your Holiness, Thank you. this has been a wonderful teaching and a stimulating engagement. And I hope that all of us takes this into our own world, spaces, communities, families, and engage in a dialogue about the many ideas that you have talked about and the need for us to come to a sense of a common humanity to save, to have a healthy, peaceful world. So it is in deep gratitude that I find myself with having had this chance to be a part of a conversation with you. And I, Richie, I also thank you for your contributions from a scientific perspective and your long history with both His Holiness and Mind and Life. Uh, so, thank you to Jampala and other translators as well. And so, Susan, I turn this back over to you. Okay. That's a, sorry. Thank you. Oh, I guess. Hmm? Yeah, I, I just have uh, just a few closing words, Your Holiness. Thank you so much, Carolyn and Richie and Jampala, and deep gratitude to you, Your Holiness. Thank you for being with us, taking the time to be with, with all of us for sharing your wisdom and your warm-hearted humor. It's really, really delightful to see, see you again and to be with you. And we look forward to seeing you again sometime soon, hopefully in person. And until then, we want you to um, keep safe and to stay healthy. And I have um, one um, final message before, before we go, and this is to share with you and with all the audience. There is a new film called Infinite Potential. And this is a photo of you, Your Holiness, with your old friend, David Bohm, who you call your Bohm. science guru. He's a quantum physicist. Yes. And this movie, this film, 
is about his life and his work. And um, in about 15 hours from now is the free global um, premiere of the film with the panel discussion. And then on your birthday, in honor of your 85th birthday, there'll be another showing and a, a panel discussion. And so we're really excited to be partnering with the Fetzer Memorial Trust in offering this film about your dear friend David Bohm out to the world. So people can get more information on infinitepotential.com. And um, we encourage you to take a look at it. So that's all. Um, just thank you, Your Holiness, and please be well and know that we love you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Holiness. Thank you. Thank you. So individual thank life, you. individual life is limited. But while we alive, utilize our brain uh, combined with our sense of responsibility, well-being of seven billion human beings. Oh, uh, th this idea, you see, on eventually in education field, then individual life limited, but this idea is will remain uh, some help to generation to come. Then due to global warming, then world become desert, then we time come to go some other places. <laughs> so, and also I think a uh, human being, a uh, lot of negative emotion, then go some other planet, also you see, create more problem. <laughs> that better, <laughs> is it better to this life we have very good opportunity, many good sources of ancient Indian uh, masters. So now, mm, so, some ideas, you see, uh, live here, and then we new life with new brain, but same consciousness. So deeper level, uh, some experience in deeper level is continue life after life. Whether uh, rigid, rigid division, <laughs> except or not, you see, brain, new life, each life, brain. The consciousness, there are many different levels of consciousness. Grosser level of consciousness entirely different on this brain. More subtle level of consciousness is more or less sort of independent. So that consciousness, life after life, go. So when when we utilize this life, it's a certain deeper level of his thinking. The impact on subtle level of consciousness that will carry. Uh, what do you call? the memory about past life. There are people, including myself. You see, when I was very young, I always used to recognize some uh, search party member. Uh, so one, one story, I think, uh, my mother, you see, told me uh, the very day the search party member reach our, our village. And nobody knows, but I already sort of very much excited. Then I was three years old. Hmm? So my mother told me. Then some visitors, uh, some some stranger, something like, come. Uh, I run towards them. I recognize some of these sort of people. And Kesar uh, Muche, you see, he wear one rosary given by Thirdin Dalama. So I took that rosary. This is my rosary. So this is funny, silly, but seems, you see, 
so some indication uh, some indication some indication you see there is sort of uh, memory about past life and then um, one Tibetan boy in Lhasa you see and he insists uh, his place not not in Tibet but in India uh, then gradually as you see Tibetan from Tibet come here uh, as, as usually so they also come then that boy uh, insist this is not my place and he insist South India then, then, the, then he insist uh, go to South India. Then parent with parent, uh, uh, then they reach South India, one Tibetan settlement. Then he insist the one monastery, his belong previous life. So then reach uh, that monastery and his own room. And he mentioned, now my glass here, open, yes, glass there. So such things, you see, the scientist, I think difficult to explain. <laughs> Very difficult. <laughs> so, so such case, you see, there is something, um, the deeper memory about past life. That's the connection. Uh, so, uh, study and you, because of that, uh, carry useful life, this life, and the impact and next, next life also use. So that my daily prayer, so long space remain, so long sentient being remain, I will remain in order to serve. That brings tremendous sort of inner strength. Not just a few, few years or a few decades, uh, not a few lives, but infinite, till space remain. Sentient beings remain, I will remain in order to serve. So that prayer, Shanta uh, uh, was a word. I usually, you see, uh, recite that each morning, uh, and meantime, the wisdom site, Pumun, Pumbu Lashemin, Telatemi, Telatemi, Tajas, I'm going to seek the Gurche, the Shisho of Pundem is a good and seek the Gurney, Tajas or Pundem, Tajas or Kanshins, Lona, Kansas to go. Nazu Nangang and Nas looked at it, Chen, that Zuzu Chen made the Richard or what? Oh, Tajas or Kanshins. Ah. So together with Shantideva's uh, the lines that I pray on a daily basis, I accompany it with uh, teachings on the wisdom side, particularly Did, reciting Nagarjuna. a short passage from Nagarjuna, oh. where it is really an analysis of the self in terms of five factors to, in, of identity, whether the, the self is identical with body and mind or whether it is distinct whether body possesses the self or self possesses the body. So when you examine the, the possible relationships in which the body and the mind, and as well as the self can be in relation to each other, when you analyze it this way, you don't find what we believe to exist, which is an objectively real self. So yeah. I combine that meditation on emptiness using Nagarjuna's lines. As soon as we wake up, I remember these things and thinking. A tremendous sort of helpful, my mind. So Nagarjuna, you see, mentioned Buddha. We pray Buddha. We believe Buddha. Where is Buddha? Beside his body, is Buddha's body. His mind, Buddha's mind. Where is Buddha? So that, I should talk about it. So to, to um, change the words, Oh. From Buddha to self. Oh. Yeah. So thinking that. And then. No. Where is I? 
This is my physical and my mind. With brain, my mind and my speech. Where is I? I ask, I want to ask you. <laughs> Where is I? <laughs> well, the, the neuroscience, Your Holiness, shows that uh, it is not located in any single area. This is one of the important findings in neuroscience that is, I think, so beautifully convergent with the teachings from Buddhism. Uh, there are analyses which show that if you look at different studies and where the self has been located, it turns out it's all over the brain. It's, it's distributed. It's not in any single location. Uh, and so uh, I think that it corresponds to the analysis that you're describing when we deeply reflect and ask ourselves that question. Right. Now here, destructive emotion, uh, the basis of this uh, destructive emotion, one, consider I, I, I. Uh, that creates my, also my friend, is my enemy, fear, like that. that. That sort of antidote is altruism. Then the very idea of I, something there, uh, antidote of that investigates where is I. No, nothing. We can't find. We can't find. Just a mere designation. Buddha himself mere designation, uh, no independent existence of Buddha. So this is so all negative emotion uh, based on appearances, as I mentioned earlier, quantum physics appearances, then nothing exists as appears. Uh, ultimately, uh, everything just a mere designation. So these two things, one Upaya Kasoda, wisdom site, one matter site, this buddhichitta and understanding about shunyata, very useful to tackle our uh, destructive emotion. My daily prayer, about four hours, uh, some other sort of recitation, some mantras, this also there. Uh, but my main practice is buddhichitta, thinking. And Shinyata, Patit Samupanda. These two practices really uh, makes different Dalai Lama. <laughs> oh, so, the, what's the, the name? His Holiness Dalai Lama? Nothing. <laughs> Change, thinking, you see, these deeper line daily basis, then change deeper level of our sort of concept. That's very helpful, very, very helpful. So sometimes, you see, in Tibetan uh, Buddhist literature, they mentioned you see, within three years, we can achieve Buddhahood. That's, I think, uh, nonsense. <laughs> 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 it is better to think eons, eons, eons. And the important is daily life uh, should be useful, meaningful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Holiness. Thank you. Now, usually our meeting with a small group and some audience, uh, useful. But this time, the physical of the contact, but utilize modern technology, so yeah. reach, I think, uh, uh, several thousand. In some yeah. cases, I think, over a million people. Mm -hmm. So I hope you see, our conversation, you see some help, and particularly, you see, those uh, students who study uh, these uh, subjects, I think they may get 
some uh, some ideas. Yes. Mainly in South India. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Your Holiness. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now I'm Thank hoping. You. Bye. Uh, as a, my friend, uh, division, uh, I'm hoping they touch the nose. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always used to do that. You see, his nose very well equipped, and his wife, his wife also. <laughs> so take advantage of that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you.